All right, everybody, it's Wayne Spoonie back. I got another short video for you, breaking down something that we all love to see, Grant Williams. Specifically, I'm gonna look at what Grant Williams maybe did the best, and that is play defense, specifically on the Brooklyn Nets stars, and even more specific, that's right, doubly specific, on Kevin Durant. So I've got five plays, just like the most recent Jalen Brown video. We're gonna walk through them. I tried to grab one from each game. I did not grab anything from game two, not for any reason, just because that's the game I forgot to take notes on. So I had notes on one, three, and four. So that's what you're getting. That's what you get. This stuff's free, right? No refunds. Um, okay, let's just jump right into it. Like I said, Grant did a wonderful job on all of Brooklyn stars, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, but really it was his work on Kevin Durant that was really important. It allowed the Celtics to switch and not have to fight through screens to get Tatum back on Durant. That's the value of having bigs that can switch, is that you don't have to compromise your defense by trying to hide guys, right? Well, on the other side, that's all the Nets were doing. They were hiding half their players on defense, right? So it's just a huge benefit, and it's one of the main reasons the Celtics defense is so incredibly good. And Grant, he's strong, he's got quick feet, he's incredibly smart, and he's got sneaky fast hands. And this first play is really an example of all of those in one. So the Nets are gonna come down. Kyrie's running the show here, sort of, you know, Kyrie if you can call ISO ball running the show. So the Nets are aligned in a horn setup, which is you see there are two big men there at the free throw line, free throw line extended. And Curry usually would sink down to the corner where Bruce Brown is, but he's gonna cut right at us. Uh, this is actually called the Iverson cut. You're gonna see, it's a uh, name that after Steve Iverson. He was a big shooting guard in the city. No, it's named after Allen Iverson. Uh, he is a shooting guard for Philly. You might've heard of him. So Curry's gonna do the Iverson cut. He's gonna get the ball. And as he's getting the ball, you can see Bruce Brown has Grant Williams on him. And he's heading towards Kevin Durant. More specifically, he's heading towards Jason Tatum. He's gonna hit Kevin Durant with a back screen here. And watch what the Celtics do. This is too easy, right? There's no scrambling. There's no Tatum fighting over a screen to get back on Durant and Grant being unsure of what to do. No. They just switch it immediately. And then Grant squares up and basically body checks Durant. And that's one of the best things he did on Durant this entire series is wear him down with physicality. And Horford will actually do the same thing. So Durant's gonna come to the ball and post up Grant Williams. But look at how hard it is for Durant to even get into position to catch the basketball. I mean, this is why they got swept. They just could not compete with this. Grant, boom, one, boom, two. Now here comes Horford to body check him too. Three, Grant's fighting, grabbing, and then ultimately, KD fights through all that. Grant's still fronting him in the post with Horford helping. There's no pass here for Steph Curry. So actually, Curry makes the right play here. He's gonna hit it to Drummond, which actually changes the angle and gives Drummond a very easy over-the-top pass to Durant. It's smart basketball by Curry. It was a good flash by Drummond to get open, and Durant's holding his position. It gets better, though. Grant sees this. Boom. Right as the pass hits, Williams shifts around behind KD to take away the over-the-top lob pass to him. He knows he's given up height. He knows he can't contest that pass. So the second Curry's moving the ball, Grant's moving his body to get in between Durant and the basket. So ultimately, he's going to give away an entry pass here, but it's a lot easier, a lot better than giving up a lob to Durant for an easy two. And posting up Grant Williams ain't exactly the easiest thing in the world, right? Like, they're down to 10 seconds on the shot clock, and they haven't even gotten the ball to Kevin Durant yet. So KD gets it. Look at how far he has to go out. He started posting, trying to post up more correctly on the block. He's eight feet away from the block now, up by our beautiful Coinbase advertisement. Williams is in perfect position. He's bodying Durant up. This is not gonna be easy look. So KD's trying to move him and he can't really. So he's gonna come to the middle, one dribble pull up. But again, smarts, physicality, quick feet, 
and sneaky fast hands. Grant knocks the ball loose and the Celtics are going the other way for two. I mean, it's just perfect defense in a microcosm of everything the Celtics did to make Kevin Durant's life hell in this series. All right, so another huge thing that the Celtics, you could just tell they were locked in and they bought into Ime Udoka as a coach. A big thing is effort. The Nets were killing us in transition, but the good thing was we didn't give them many transition opportunities. So you can see Grant down here in the far corner and his guy, he's actually guarding Claxton in this setup and Horford is on Bruce Brown playing that Rob Williams off ball role. So it's going to be a turnover. Grant's behind the play. So is Al. But look at Grant. He sees Claxton heading straight to the rim, hopefully to get an easy transition bucket. Jalen does a really nice job of slowing Drogic down, but Grant is stuck on Claxton, takes away any easy lob to Claxton for a loud two, those momentum breakers. And you notice this is the part of the game. Brooklyn's coming back. They're cut into our lead. These are the type of effort plays that don't show up on the box score, but save your team buckets and lead to wins. So here we go. Grant takes it away. He knows Claxton. There's no pass to Claxton anymore. He kind of floats onto Claxton, but stays in a help position in the middle here. And now Brooklyn realizes there's no transition opportunity. We better run something. So what we're going to see here is Kessler Edwards, who Horford has cross matched up against uh, just because, you know, the craziness of transition, just cover somebody, right? Uh, he's going to cut away from the play into the bottom corner towards us to get Horford out of this play because they're going to run a pick and roll for Durant and they want to empty that strong side and give KD some room to operate. Drogic is going to hit KD and just kind of clear out in space wide, give Durant some more space and Claxton's going to come up with Grant Williams covering him to set the screen. Now, this is a combination of great defense and just horrid spacing by Brooklyn. I mean, I don't even know what they're doing here. Look at where Kessler Edwards cuts. He cuts right next to Bruce Brown. So Derek White is covering them both. And then look at Horford. He's like, you know what, you cut. I'm not moving. I'm just going to stand here in the middle of the paint and help on this pick and roll. Like, I don't care what you do, Kessler Edwards. Go nuts. Stand right next to your teammate in Derek White. That's not exactly great, smart offense. But nonetheless, that's just an example of the little things Brooklyn was not doing and why they're just a worse team. But back to the main event here, and this is that KD Claxton pick and roll yet again. This is a Tatum, Grant Williams defended pick and roll. And the beauty when those two guys are defending the Kevin Durant with any type of screen, whether it's a pick and roll or off ball, they don't have to worry about fighting. They just switch it. Like, go ahead, Claxton, you want to post up Jason Tatum? Okay, you can do that a hundred times. We'll let you do that whenever you want. But the only reason we have that luxury is because we can leave Grant Williams on KD in an ISO with effectively a clear side of the floor. Although, again, their spacing really undermines that with Horford literally just standing in the middle of the paint, essentially playing zone defense. But So KD, there's no magic to this set for the Nets. He's just going to try and take Grant Williams to the rim his little, you know, couple dribble left hand, get to his pull up, the KD special, but he can't get any space on Grant and he tries to throw a shoulder, boom. But Grant does such a good job of moving his feet and he's so ahead of KD that he gets out of the way so KD can't get a shoulder into him and KD just falls down. He just, he collapses basically. And then once he's on his way, he kind of stumbles into Grant Jalen's come down to help off Goran Dragic because he realizes KD's out of control. He's not going to get that pass off. And boom, it's another steal. Celtics are on their way. It's beautiful defense by Grant Williams, but really the whole team. And it's, again, just indicative of how we took away Kevin Durant. All we gave him was one-on-one -on -one against great isolation defenders. That's just not a sustainable way to play offense, even if you're one of the best isolation players in the world. Okay, so this comes at you quick. Uh, our friends over at ESPN did not do a very good job of capturing what was going on in this play, but uh, bear with me here. In the bottom right-hand corner, you can see 
Uh, Derek White's on Drogic, and he's going to set a down screen on Grant Williams to get the KD Derek White matchup. So if they've learned their lesson here in game three, that they can't just keep going at Grant Williams. And in fact, they're doing their best to get Grant Williams off of Kevin Durant. Well, not so fast. So like I said, when it's Tatum and Grant involved in those picks, we just switch it. Nobody cares. There's no fighting. Go nuts. ISO Grant Williams. ISO Jason Tatum. Do whatever you want. You're playing into the Celtics' hands. White and Pritchard were really the only two guys that we tried to protect uh, when it came to KD a little bit. And you'll actually see they execute this to perfection. So Drogic is going to actually hit Grant with a pretty solid good screen. White is just going to effectively check Durant, slow him down, stop him from getting the ball easily, and that's going to give Grant enough time to get back on a KD, and then Derek White can float into the corner. So while we were protecting Derek White from the one-on-one -on -one matchup, he's also an incredible and smart defender in his own right, so he's able to execute these kind of high-level defensive plays to get himself out of trouble and get back onto a relative non -threat. I say relative non-threat because Dragic has killed us his entire career, but, you know, he's no KD. So Grant's going to fight over that screen. Derek White's done a wonderful job of just slowing KD down, making that entry pass difficult. And obviously, Smart's on Kyrie, so he's got to make sure he's got an angle for that entry pass or the Cobra will strike. How many times have we seen that? So White's fought him. The entry pass comes. KD's off balance. He doesn't really, he can't collect the ball and get into a move quickly. So by the time he's got it and gets comfortable, Grant and Derek White are there. So KD, I think he's looking to pass there, but White's immediately going to kick out to Dragic, and Grant's going to get right up into his body like he's done the last couple of plays and just not allow anything easy. Lots of physicality here. Grant's not moving. He doesn't let KD get comfortable, get to a good spot. This one doesn't matter. I mean, it's an incredible contest. It's incredible defense. This is just Kevin Durant. He does make this shot, but man, that's an incredibly good defensive possession by Grant Williams. And again, it just goes back to, that's not an easy bucket. Over seven games or four, it's not easy to beat a team when these are the type of looks you generate consistently. So it's great defense. It's the Kevin Durant factor. It happens. These are the type of shots that kept the Nets in the game. If they weren't making these, these would have been 30-point blowouts. Okay, so we're going to jump to game four here, and then we will go back to game three for the coup de grace. Coup de gras. I'm not good with French. This is a really quick, fast play here. But this is semi-transition, really full transition. Grant's kind of, he's not lost, but he's looking for someone to match up to. You can see Marcus scream at him to get Seth Curry. Grant immediately turns, gets the Curry, and look at where Grant Williams is when Curry catches this ball. That's trouble, right? That's an elite shooter, Grant Williams, for all his wonderful, wonderful aspects as a player. I wouldn't say vertical athleticism is exactly his best trait. But you know what? This is just an example of the Celtics and Grant Williams wanting this series more, being the harder playing team, even if they were also the better team. And that's how you get a four game sweep. So in the words of a guy who's been canceled, R. Kelly. So I will sing this in the stylings of Scott Stapp of Creed. I believe I can fly. Grant gets out jumps in the air all 22 inches of his vertical leap and blocks Seth Curry's transition three-point opportunity in a four-point game in a critical game four or rather not critical game four I should say a game the Celtics could absolutely afford to lose they'd be going back home 3-1 the series probably would be over then but it doesn't matter. Celtics are sending a message to the NBA, and it's these types of play. This goes down as a block, but that is a much bigger play than just a block. Well, not all blocks are created equally. One, this is effectively a turnover because it goes right to Jason Tatum. And two, this is an incredibly good look for a team that barely generated any incredibly good looks all series. 
Grant gets the block on Seth Curry. And again, the Celtics are going right back the other way. It's just wonderful effort, wonderful defense, great defensive quarterbacking by Marcus Smart, the defensive player of the year. And again, just another example of the defensive dominance of the Celtics and Grant Williams especially. I mean, he was truly incredible. Okay, so like I said, the coup de gras, right? That's the word, is that the coup de gras? I think that's the phrase, so I will warn you. One, if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen this play unless you ignore me and just follow me to be nice, which I also appreciate. Thank you very much. But nonetheless, this is the first play where I'm going to show you Grant Williams covering two of the greatest offensive players in NBA history so well. One of them travels, and the other one could barely get a pass off, and he guards them back to back. Unfortunately, somebody loses their man off ball, and it results in a wide open three for the Nets, but that ain't Grant's fault. This is incredible all nba defense level stuff from grant williams and it's just such a luxury to have a guy like this on your bench i mean it's just incredible we got this guy coming off our bench right so this is going to be kd uh actually at the controls basically running point guard here it's a kd Kyrie pick and roll and one thing i'll note again i said this is game three people talked about like what did nash knew nash didn't do anything he didn't have kd Kyrie pick and rolls yes he did It's just that the Celtics just switch those because they have so many big athletic defenders that all it ends up in is an isolation. You want to pick, again, Kyrie's picking Jason Tatum. Grant Williams is switching on to Kevin Durant. Congratulations. You've accomplished literally nothing other than putting some miles on Kyrie and making him do something he doesn't want to do, and that's set a pick. Congratulations. Like, People are killing Nash, and I think I called him Kerr earlier, so I apologize, Steve Kerr, Steve Nash. But really, he didn't have a lot of options in this series, and it's just a lot of it is team construction, uh, but he did get outcoached. So anyway, again, here's the pick and roll. Ends up in Kevin Durant ISO against Grant Williams. Grant moves his feet perfectly. Katie's going to go behind the back, try to get to the middle of the floor. Again, physicality, perfect positioning right in front of KD's shoulders like you always hear Scal talk about like he got his shoulders down and got to the rim this is the inverse of that Grant is not letting KD get his shoulders past him and get to the rim he's making him get to maybe his step back but he actually plays this so well KD fumbles the ball Grant gets a little hand on it he fumbles the ball it somehow kind of squirts out to Kyrie here and Tatum has actually moved on to help Durant. Grant recognizes that immediately, gets out to Kyrie, and Kyrie's like, oh man, I'm gonna cross this dude up. Uh, No, you are not, Kyrie. Actually, look at this. Cuts him off baseline. Kyrie dribbles, he tries to go baseline again. Cuts him off baseline, has to pick up his dribble, realizes he's way under the hoop, can't get a shot off. He travels. This is a fucking travel, okay? But nonetheless, the refs let it go. I think Jalen might have lost Patty Mills here. See him as kind of like no man's land. Tatum clearly has Durant because him and Grant switch. Marcus is on Seth Curry. I think Jalen thought he was going to have to help, but Grant played it so perfectly that he didn't. And Patty, with a little off-ball movement, is going to get right into Kyrie's line of sight. It's a great cut, smart play by Patty Mills. And he's going to bury this three. But again to no fault of Grant Williams, who just covered, like, glue two of the greatest scorers of all time. And again, just beautiful defense. What a series on both ends by Grant Williams and really all the Celtics. And Grant, no no one else played above their head like Grant Williams, though. He was just incredible on both sides of the ball. And I hope these five plays showed you why. Anyway, that is all I got for this one. Spoonie out. Thank you.